So it's finally started. Midorima versus Akashi. Shutako versus Rakuzan. Oh man. So epic. And we find a we find out a few things. Yeah, we find out a few things about um Akashi's past with Midorima. Apparently Midorima's never beaten Akashi and Shogi. And yeah, we find out a few more things uh, about his team. His team, uh, three of the members on his team are actually um, uncrowned kings. So they're really powerful. Yeah, they're really good. And before the match even started, we had already seen some of the members because they just kept running into Sadine's, like members pretty much by coincidence. <laughs> And a lot of this is going down, like, around the time when Kagami's, like, shoes, like, broke and he was looking for new shoes and whatnot. Yeah, Kagami actually ran into one of their members as well while uh, hunting for shoes that would fit him because his feet are so large. He couldn't find any shoes in any stores, but luckily... Uh, he, he gets some from Almine. Almine actually loans him some shoes that he uses after whipping him in one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, that's kind of discouraging, um, you know, since Kagami has a match coming up soon. So I don't know if that's good for his confidence getting whipped by Almine just before his match with Kisei. I'm looking forward to that one. Uh, this is um, turning out to be pretty interesting. Akashi, he seems a little bit overpowering. And, and it's interesting because he's not even going all out yet. <laughs> yeah, they, the first quarter ends with a tied score. And yeah, I think Akashi, oh man. He, once he starts getting serious, it's over. Yeah, Midorima mentioned something about the eye. I'm guessing that's Akashi's power, something to do with the eye. I'm thinking it's the um, like the power to see the future type thing, like predict, you know, movements similar to the Sharingan. <laughs> Cause I recall Akashi uh, when he tried to um, stab Kagami with the scissor. Uh, I'm sure he knew that Kagami would dodge that. Yeah, I think he predicted that. He was able to sense, like, Kagami's ability to dodge that, pretty much. So I think he could actually, like, sense how good a player is just by looking at them. Yeah, not even having to actually, like, play them. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't have tried that. Yeah... Because if he had poked Kagami's eye out with that scissor, I think he would have been in a lot of trouble. Yeah. He could have been, um, well, he could have been thrown in prison. Honestly, like, poking someone's eye out, that's enough to go to prison for. Seriously. He wouldn't have just been kicked out of the Winter Cup. He would have gone to prison for that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just being realistic here. <laughs> Oh man. Uh, Midorima started off nice though. I liked how he started with the three pointers and he's really serious. He's like, Akashi, I'm gonna beat you. But Midorima has one flaw. Those three pointers ain't gonna work so well if he's not open and Rakuzan is guarding him now. After he showed off those threes, like they're just guarding him really nicely so he doesn't shoot the threes. And if he's neutralized, if his ability to shoot threes is, like, neutralized, then, yeah, they're at a disadvantage. They really are. And at the end, we get to see, like, one of the crowned kings. I can't remember his name now, but he has the power to kind of, like, dribble really hard and make the ball disappear from your sight, pretty much. Yeah, so he's kind of almost pulling something similar to what Kuroku does 
The only difference is he's doing it to the ball itself, not to himself, like Kuroku does. Kuroku can make himself vanish. <laughs> yeah. He just made the ball disappear by dribbling really hard. Yeah, so that's an interesting technique. It really is. And it just it just shows the difference in strength between Rakuzan and Shutako right now. Yeah, Shutako is at a huge disadvantage. They're they're pretty much finished. They really are. And like I've said before, Sadin is the one that's gonna be facing off against Rakuzan. Sadin's gonna win against the Rakuzan though, I'm sure of it. From a writer standpoint, you gotta have Sadin win, right? <laughs> yeah. You can't have uh, Rakuzan lose to Shutsuko or Kaijo. It's gotta be Sadin, our main heroes that beat Rakuzan. Seriously, like, it's so predictable for me. It really is. Otherwise, I'd be kind of mad, like, if it didn't go that way. Yeah, honestly. I'd be upset if it didn't turn out that way. Really. <laughs> uh, how will Sadin win against Rakuzan, though? After Shutako loses and whatnot? Sadin, uh, they're gonna have to play really hard. They're gonna have to evolve as a team. Kagami, he's gonna have to not only go into the zone because that might not be enough. He's gonna have to work with Kuroku, tap into like even more potential, hidden potential. Yeah, that's the only way I see it right now. Honestly, guys, the only way I see him winning is tapping into more potential. And we need some type of power up, some type of ass pull power up that can actually like you know, surpass the zone itself. Otherwise, he won't win. <laughs> Let's be real here. If he can't even be Aumine one-on-one, -on -one, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he can beat Akashi. Yeah. I mean, he, he did defeat Aumine before, but it was more of a team effort when he beat them. Yeah, when he beat um, Aumine and his crew. <laughs> oh, man, that was a good game, guys. Good times. All of Sadine's games have been good, but I think the last one is going to be the most, like, impactful, intense. But I think I'm going a little bit ahead with my predictions. I'm overthinking it now. Anyways, guys, how do you guys feel about Kuroku no Basket right now? Do you think it's the best, like, sports anime you've ever seen? Does it measure up to Prince of Tennis? Does it measure up to Slam Dunk? Let me know in the comments, guys. I personally feel this measures up really nicely. I like this series. Really, really entertaining to watch. So, yeah, guys, Omega Dark Mage signing out.